Mike Hallmark from Helwig Suspension Products. We're here at the Golden Bar Ranch in Arizona. We're about to do a install on a rear sway bar on a... 2020 Gladiator. Uh, this is the DZ truck. I can't wait to uh, get that thing on there and see how it performs. Cool, rock and roll. We're gonna do this install right here in the dirt under the stars. Come follow it. All right, we're about to pull the factory sway bar off this 2020 Jeep Gladiator. Thanks to Boxo Tools for hooking us up with a tool bag. We can actually do this out here in the middle of nowhere. So we'll get this pulled off, put our rear sway bars on, and be ready for the trail tomorrow. So follow along. So this is a real easy uh, removal and install. We have four bolts that are 15 millimeter going to the actual axle, we'll remove those. And then I have the in-link bolts that are 19 millimeter, and we'll take those off, get the factory bar out of the way, and then reverse the process, put ours on and then we'll put our locking sway bar uh, clamps on. They'll keep the sway bar from moving left to right and they'll give you years of excellent service. So we're gonna use the new hardware supply with the Hellwig kit to go from our brackets here to the axle itself. We're gonna reuse your factory or aftermarket bolts and end links that you have for your, your Gladiator. So, super easy from there. We're gonna use the provided grease to grease up the debushing here. Get sway bar prepped. First we'll mount the sway bar itself onto the axle and then we'll go ahead and hook up the end links, make sure everything's adjusted properly and we're done. It's that simple. Also provided in the kit is some thread locking compound. Make sure you use that so the threads don't back out on you. So before installing the debushing onto the sway bar, you want to take the grease and properly lube the bushing itself. That's going to make sure that you have quiet operation. What you want to do to make the job easier is actually install the in-link portion of the sway bar first and hang it, and then you can hang the actual sway bar on the axle itself. All right, so sway bar is installed to the axle. So what we're doing now is up here, we're gonna adjust the end links to make sure they're proper length, driver to passenger side, so it's level sitting on the ground. That way it'll give you optimal sway control while going down the road. As you can see, I set this on the middle setting. Reason being is this vehicle has a rough top tin on it. It has a lot of weight in the bed. So we wanna go ahead and make sure that we're going to limit how much leverage that weight has over the sway bar, so we'll put it in the middle set. All right, rear sway bar is on, bolts are torqued, we've got the the collars on this gonna keep the sway bar from sliding left to right. End links have been adjusted. Uh, bolts are actually in the middle hole here for the weight of the vehicle. Everything's buttoned up. As you can see, we did this here at night in the dirt with hand tools. We're gonna get some shut eye tonight and then go hit the trail in the morning. I've never been a real, really put any thought into a sway bar, honestly, until you reached out to me before this event and uh, so we did the install last night, super clean install. Um, you did it on your back in the dirt, so it, it didn't require much, what, three or four tools, you know? Um, and I was honestly shocked. The first turn we made uh, coming out of camp, uh, I was shocked on, on how well the, the, the butt sat. You know, it, it really took the corners well, and I'm a believer now. I mean, uh, the Warren guys had, had said something to me, and I was like, eh, you know, whatever, you know, I've never been a sway bar believer or, or experienced it, really. I am now.